history is written. The Supreme Court guarantees marriage for all. There's a rush for licenses in more than a dozen states where same-sex marriage had been illegal. This is the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. This is our Western edition. Today, in one of the most momentous civil rights decisions in its history, the Supreme Court of the United States found that gay and lesbian Americans have a constitutional right to marry. Cheers shook the courthouse steps. Licenses were issued and weddings performed in states where such marriages were outlawed. The vote in Obergefell versus Hodges was five to four. The dissents were vehement, led by Chief Justice John Roberts. But the majority, led by Justice Anthony Kennedy, found its justification in the 14th Amendment, written after the Civil War to extend equal protection under law to freed slaves. This court decided equal protection and due process also include same-sex couples. Here's our chief legal correspondent, Jan Crawford. It was a ruling decades in the making. A hard-fought victory for the right to marry, guaranteed in a landmark decision that emphasized equality for gays and lesbians and the full promise of liberty. Writing for the court, Justice Anthony Kennedy said same-sex couples seek not to denigrate marriage, but rather to live their lives joined by its bond. Their hope is not to be condemned, to live in loneliness, he wrote, excluded from one of civilization's oldest institutions. They ask for equal dignity in the eyes of the law. The Constitution grants them that right. The court said laws that ban same-sex marriage impose stigma and injury, no different from the hurt that resulted from laws barring interracial unions. President Obama, who had opposed same-sex marriage until just three years ago, hailed the decision as a victory for America. When all Americans are treated as equal, we are all more free. The president called the man at the center of the case, Jim Obergefell, who fought Ohio's refusal to recognize his out-of-state marriage to his longtime partner and was in the courtroom when Kennedy announced the decision. And he started reading, and I started crying. And I cried throughout almost his entire um, ruling. Kennedy acknowledged the historical definition as between a man and a woman, but wrote of changed understandings of marriage, saying new dimensions of freedom become apparent to new generations. In a scathing dissent, Justice Antonin Scalia said the opinion's showy profundities are often profoundly incoherent. All four of the court's conservatives wrote dissents saying the issue should be left to the states. Scalia said today's decision ignores the will of the voters to impose the judgment of an elite few, a select, patrician, highly unrepresentative panel of nine. And Chief Justice John Roberts encouraged same-sex marriage supporters to celebrate today's decision, celebrate the achievement of a desired goal, but do not celebrate the Constitution. It had nothing to do with it. But it's Justice Kennedy who's been the decisive voice affirming gay rights under the Constitution in four separate major opinions over the past 20 years. Those cases will be his legacy, Scott, putting gays and lesbians on equal ground. Jan Crawford on the steps of the court for us this evening. Jan, thank you. So June 26, 2015 will be remembered as the day same-sex marriage began to disappear from our national conversation. From now on, it's likely to be known just as marriage. Carter Evans is following the reaction. Outside San Francisco City Hall, supporters waited anxiously for the decision to come down. Kate Kendall is with the National Center for Lesbian Rights. It's a hell of a day! Today, America walks the talk of equal justice under law. Jim, would you please join hands? Inside City Hall, Mark Streeter and Hein Nguyen exchanged vows. I now pronounce you spouses for life. Congratulations. Same-sex marriage was already legal in California, but it was also a long road to get there, with voters, legislators, and courts going back and forth on the issue for nine years. California Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom was mayor of San Francisco and first opened City Hall to same-sex marriage in 2004. This is now the law of the land. Yeah, it's incredible. Who would have imagined? 
In New York, hundreds marched in victory through the streets, and there were long lines for marriage licenses in Dallas, Texas. In Ohio, two men finally tied the knot after being together for 20 years. Matthew Manzel and John Espejo were plaintiffs in one of the cases before the Supreme Court. They're now celebrating their new right. We shouldn't have to say it's a gay marriage or it's a regular marriage. It's just marriage. Lieutenant Governor Newsom says today's ruling is just another step. People still have strong bigotry. People don't always share it. Uh, there's still laws on the books that allow you to be fired uh, if you're gay. There's still laws in the book that deny you to get a table at a restaurant in this country. Here in California, where same-sex marriage has been legal since 2013, gay couples are still feeling a sense of relief today. Scott, they tell me they can now go anywhere in the country and enjoy the same rights they have here. Carter, thank you very much. Now, the ruling does not take effect for three weeks, and three states, Mississippi, Louisiana, and North Dakota, said they won't issue licenses yet. But others complied immediately, and in Texas, George Harris and Jack Evans became the first to be married in Dallas County. They have been together for 54 years. Still, many in the nation were dismayed by the ruling, including Alabama Governor Robert Bentley. I, like 81% uh, of the people of Alabama, believe that marriage uh, is, is at least uh, on the biblical sense is defined as between one man and one woman. We have to go, obviously, by what uh, the courts say, uh, but I certainly can disagree with them, and I do. But with today's ruling, Alabama and these 13 additional states will join the rest of the union, making same-sex unions the law of the land.